Hey, welcome back to another video. We're out here in the Sierras doing a little bit of camping and overlanding. There'll be a video for that at the end of this one, but this specific video is gonna be about my solar electronics, my fridge setup. I've been asked a couple times about it, so I thought I'd just do a quick walk around and kind of explain the layout of it. So let's get into that. So up top on the GFC, I've got two 100 watt Renogy solar panels mounted between the two beef bars. I made some custom aluminum brackets. I'm sure there's 10,000 other ways to mount them, but I liked them running parallel with the truck and kind of recessed down below the beef bars. Uh, that way, if there's any branches or anything, it's gonna hit the beef bars and not the panel. So that's 200 watts. You can certainly do more if you have a bigger battery system, um, but for mine, 200 was good. So for days like today, the sun is over here and my panels are facing the opposite direction. Um, so I have these portable panels. These are the 50 watt panels, Nomad 50s from Goal Zero. They fold up, I'll show you that here in a second. These are super lightweight, super modular. Uh, take them out, move them around. I have like a 30 foot extension cord. So when my main panels aren't getting enough power, I use these and I get anywhere from 40 to 45 watts out of a 50 watt panel. So for those of you that know solar stuff and efficiency, that's really good. Um, normally you can only count on around 80%, but to get 40 or 45 out of a 50 watt panel is really good and these consistently provide that. So uh, this is how they fold up. They have legs in the back that Velcro down. Um, so you put those out when you need to set it up and then it's just, folds against itself. This flap has magnets, that's it. And then obviously unplug it, but then it just sits in the truck like that. And then just the reverse to put it out. It's got loops so you can hang it from something if you needed to. I've stretched this across the hood of my truck before when the hood has a bunch of sun, but these things are great. Um, I had a 100 watt panel, but it was much bigger, much heavier. It didn't have nearly the efficiency of this 50 watt panel, uh, so I like these a lot. So the 200 watt panels up top have a pretty much permanent uh, wiring system into the cab of the truck. It comes down here, this thick Goal Zero wire uh, or cable, it's 30 feet long. It goes from the panels down underneath the cab. I have a rubber grommet under the cab that goes into my Goal Zero, which I'll show you in a second. This is my Dometic 75 liter fridge, uh, dual zone, two lids. Both can be fridges, both can be freezers, one or the other. Uh, love this thing. Um, so yes, the 200 always powers the goal zero. When I wanna add the auxiliary 50, I use this extension cable that comes out of the goal zero and runs all the way back there. And sometimes I'll pair them together. I'll run the 200 panels at the same time as the 50 to get maximum input into the, the goal zero. So this is where I keep the goal zero. It's the passenger side rear seat. I deleted it. Um, it sits down there. I moved the goal zero Yeti 500 up top here so you can see it a little better. Right now we're four o'clock in the afternoon, partially shaded. So I'm getting 30 watts out of my 50 watt panels. Still plenty fine. My goal zero is up to 96%. It was down at 70 when I woke up this morning. So it's gotten plenty of power from the sun today while we were out hiking around. Like I said, it's the 500. If I were to do this again, I'd probably get the 1000 or the 1500. I might even still go buy the 1500 and just keep this as a spare. During the summer when the cab of the truck gets hot, this thing gets drained down pretty quick. Winter camping, this thing does pretty well because the fridge and the cab stays much cooler so it doesn't draw nearly as much power. Summertime could definitely use a bigger goal zero. So if you're in the market for purchasing one, buy a little bit bigger than you expected. So the solar uh, cable either goes into the front or they have a port in the back, depending on how you wanna wire it. It's got 12 volt power, USB, USB-C, 60 watt USB-C, 18 watt USB-C, You've got 110 volt, 300 watt. It powers this huge fridge easily. It recharges my rinse kit. It recharges cell phones, laptops, all of it. It, it works great. Super happy with it. One more quick thing. It's got this super convenient carry handle. And don't quote me on the specs, but I think it's like 12 or 13 pounds. It's the lithium version instead of the lead acid older version. This thing's great. I love it. It's got a fan in it in case it gets too hot. 
good product. One other little thing that's just real convenient is having these rechargeable AAA and AA batteries. These are just Amazon rechargeables with this little recharger that you can put right in front of the Goal Zero. I put these in my lapel mic, my headlamps, uh, all sorts of little tools and accessories. So I just keep these with me all the time. I can just recharge them while we're out in the truck. I don't have to remember to keep uh, fresh double A's and triple A's with me out on the trail. So it's got this little battery carrying case, which is from Amazon too. And this just lives down here next to my Goal Zero. So back here in the bed of the truck, I've ran a uh, thick gauge 12 volt wire from my truck battery all the way to the back. Um, this is just a quick little cheap uh, USB and 12 volt power supply with a digital display of what my truck battery is. This 12 volt runs some interior lights, uh, dimmable white and red lights, and they're all over the interior of the GFC. Those of you with GFCs have probably seen this a bunch of times. And then I use these charge phones, charge, uh, we run a little fan up in the camper, a portable speaker. Super convenient, and then I can make sure I'm not draining the truck battery too far down. For the interior of the truck, I've got an iPad mini here mounted on a 67 Designs mount. Um, this thing is great for navigation. I also use it for my drone photography. I've got a Garmin inReach here mounted to the dash with the regular Garmin suction cup. This thing Bluetooths to your cell phone so you don't have to try and type on this little screen. I can just type on my cell phone through the app. That thing's awesome. Uh, those of you that don't know the Garmin stuff, it's got like the SOS feature. Um, it's a monthly subscription, but anywhere, uh, I'm pretty sure in the world, you can hit the SOS button and you'll get rescued. Behind the iPad, I've got a traditional VHF radio, GoPro mount up top, mic down here. And I think that does it for the interior. Up here under the hood, I've swapped out the OEM battery with a good deep cycle North Star battery. Uh, I've coupled that with the SDHQ battery terminal mounting system. Gives you a bunch of different points to attach wires to and cables. And then behind the battery, I've got this SD off-road mount tray. Uh, it's super awesome product. I've got the dual ARBs mounted to it, my Switch Pro, a whole fusing system, uh, a master fuse to cut power to the whole thing. Allows you to get super organized. I've done a whole nother video on this, the install, all the wiring, so you can check that out. I'll link that at the end of the video. But super clean setup, and this is one of my two power sources, and then my Goal Zero is my other power source. Well, that does it for this solar and electronics review and walk around in my truck. Let me know if you have any product or install questions. Happy to answer them. You can message me down below the video in the comments, or you can reach out to me on Instagram, which is a little bit easier at prospect underscore overland. Thanks for checking out the video, and see you on the next one.